I recently had a person uh, ask me about bridles and why I use a three-point bridle on my kites. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Why do I? And are there other bridles arrangements that would work as well or better? Well, on this kite, <clears throat> I've got multiple bridles. And I use this kite as a test mule, I guess you would call it, um, for different bridal arrangements that I'm thinking might provide some benefit in flight. So I'm going to start with a three-point bridle here. A three-point bridle, first, what it is, is the three points are the number of connections the bridle has to the kite. It has two connections on the bow that go through this, the, the bridle goes through the skin and is attached to the bow on the back. <clears throat> and then it's attached to another line that is connected to the spine, directly to the spine at a place near the tail of the kite. And that is usually between four and six inches towards the nose from the tail of the spine. Somewhere in that range is pretty typical for where uh, the lower bridle connection seems to provide good performance. Now the reason I use this arrangement for my bridles in virtually all my kites and that's whether the kite is square, rectangular, or like this, kind of a modified diamond shape. I use synthetic materials. <clears throat> this is a polyfilm right here. And I use carbon fiber for the bow and carbon fiber in this case for my battens that I put on. And then this one, I have a bamboo spine. Well, <laughs> no matter how careful I am at building my kites, and even if I were, I'm not, but even if I were a perfectionist, <clears throat> when I complete the kites, they may not balance precisely from right to left. Now, they might balance right to left statically, just holding it like this. But when they're in the air, the way the wind interacts with all of the different uh, parts of the kite that uh, force it to change its shape and change its behavior, when that occurs is the only time you really know if the right-left balance is actually accurate. And the way I test that is to fly the kite horizontally across the wind. And if it will fly straight from right to left and from left to right and from near the ground up as high as it'll go and back down again. If all of those flight paths are actually straight. Then I, that's when I know that the adjustments on my bridle have correctly compensated for any slight or maybe not so slight uh, out of balance aspects of the kite that could be in parted by simply a difference in the way the tension of carbon fiber is from one end of the bow to the other, which I have no control of. It could be the amount of glue I put on one side was a little more than the amount of glue I put on the other. It could be many factors like that, in addition to the factors that maybe I cut the kite out in a way that wasn't exactly the same right to left many, many possibilities to make it not be correctly balanced. And it will show up in flight, even though it may not show up right here, just statically sitting. 
So the three-point bridle allows me to adjust for that. It allows me to adjust that right and left balance by having this particular upper bridle uh, yoke, I call it. It's just a short piece that connects the two. Uh, I mean, one end's connected to the bow and the other end's connected to the bow. And then the uh, part that's connected to the spine is attached to this with a lark's head knot. And the lark's head knot is an adjustable knot. It allows me to slide this position right and left and then lock it in place again so I can adjust it while I'm out on the flying field until it is providing the performance I'm looking for. That's why I use a three-point bridle because it's adjustable right to left and very easily so. But many, many kites are made with different bridle arrangements. Now, on this kite, I have attached another bridle. Let's see if I can have you see it here. It's attached at two places on the lower part of the spine. And it has a glass bead that slides up and down on that line. And where it slides to will be determined by the wind and the kite and the angle the kite is flying and things like that. It'll be automatically adjusting. Now, at the upper end though, I only have it connected to the cross point of where the bow and the spine cross. And that's just one place that I have it attached. Now, a great many kites are made with a two-point bridle. They attach it here at the cross point, and then they run the uh, bridle to a place on the lower part of the spine and attach it there. That's the two-point bridle. It's connected in two places to the kite. Well, it does allow for a very slight amount of adjustment from right to left if you simply move the position of the knot that you've tied for the upper part to the right or to the left, but that adjustment is extremely sensitive and has very limited amount of value in terms of providing a real balance to the kite that can be maintained. So I don't use a two-point bridle in my kites. I use a three-point bridle where it's connected at the bow in two places to allow for better, more precise adjusting. And once that adjustment's made, I have a way to permanently uh, keep it that way because of the knot I use, the Lark's head knot. Now, I would, I would use, and I have used, this lower bridle idea, making it a four-point bridle. It would be like this. Um, I would have the two points connected to the bow, and then I would have two points connected to the spine with a, either a bead or just a loop of the line running uh, through that. And sometimes I find that to be interesting to play with. I haven't noticed that it provides very much difference in its performance. But some kite makers make bridal arrangements that are connected in multiple places along the spine in an arrangement that allows the lower part of the bridle to help maintain a stiffness, an added stiffness to the lower section of the bridle.
those are a little more complicated to make, but uh, it's similar in concept. And then those also use a connection like this at the nose, where their uh, bridal connections at the nose are on the bow, on the right hand and left hand side of the spine. And normally they're about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half from the center of the spine to the connection point on each side. So the spread between the connecting points is roughly two and a half to three inches, depending on the kite size and uh, what the kite maker's decision was and for whatever the reason, <laughs> hard to know. So that's just a little bit about bridles. I hope it's not too confusing and might be helpful for you to think of some ideas of your own that you may want to implement to try. I often put multiple bridles on a kite to and fly it with one set of bridles, you know, and then bring it in, switch bridles, fly it again, see if I notice any significant difference and what that difference is. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight to bridles. I hope that answers your questions if you had them. If not, please uh, send me an email at kitefighter at yahoo.com. And if I know the answer, <laughs> I'll be happy to answer it.